Yo, everybody, what is happening? Good to see you guys. Oh, Jason, what is up? Good to see Jason. Good to see you, Daniel. Tony Wheeler says he's excited. He's ready for the guest speaker, Dave Malikpour. Charles in Washington, roll the camera. Hello, Steve DeHard. DeHardy. DeHardy. <laughs> I mess it up. Um, Jason says he wants to enter tonight's swag giveaway for the Tad R1 TX. There you go, buddy. Good evening from Dallas, Texas. Good evening, David. What's up, brother? It's our Cora player. It's our tribe Cora player. Dude, anytime we have a party, David, I hope you bring your Cora and you can play for us. Mazel tov, mis amigos. <laughs> Mazel. <clears throat> Ola Mikey from San Diego. What's up, Alex? How are you? Hey, Nick. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Yo, Biatches. What's up, Charles? Here comes Dave. Okay, everybody. Dave, can you? Uh, let's see if I can. I'm going to add you, Dave, and see if I can hear you. Well, let, let's see. I think I can add you in. There you are, Dave. You ready? You're on. You're live. Live. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I can hear you. All right. How are you guys doing? Good, man. We got people. We're packing it up little by little. We've got 63 on right now. We'll give them a couple minutes and they'll they'll catch up. So are you in Chicago right now, man? I am. I am in Chicago. We just uh, arrived today to <clears throat> get set up for Expona. Um, yeah, yeah. In Schaumburg, actually. Scenic Schaumburg. Schaumburg. Like, yeah. Looks like anywhere USA, basically, you know. Dave, you blow me away, brother. By the way you work and the way you travel, man, it blows my mind. You are you are a road machine. You're a road warrior. You know, it's it, it's weird, but like someone will say, "Hey, can you can you come over here next Wednesday, or can you can you meet me tomorrow and look at this building, or I'm going to build this thing, or I want to have that system." And and you know, in a lot of our projects that we work on, the last final touches is me to come out and tune the room up and set the system and to to be perfect and um, that's I get to be the icing on the cake. So everybody's always happy by the time they see me and they've forgotten all the woes of building a oh, room or, you know, what it takes to, to, you know, to get every, every little thing right. But um, yeah, no, it's cool. And uh, you've been able to join me on a couple <coughs> of uh, experiences in Atlanta that I think were memorable for both of us. A couple excursions. Yeah. So that you guys know, so that the viewers know, when I talk to Dave, man, I talk to, I never know where he's going to be. He's like, I'm in Mumbai. He's like, I'm in Austria. I'm in like, he's all over the world, man. <laughs> I'm like, can't keep up with him. Like, well, yeah. yeah. It, it, some, a lot of times it's, you know, New York, LA, Atlanta, Miami, um, yeah. you know, and where music is happening. Um, but also we're, you know, we're getting into other projects, designing rooms for people, uh, listening rooms to channel audio file rooms taking you know i think a lot of people may or may not know my background but you know i've been designing studios for nearly 35 years for some of the very top artists and and mix engineers and commercial studios you know and you know places like the hit factory in new york where millions of amazing hits were made were top clients i built many rooms for them starting in 93 um and uh you know, just that background of sorry. I'm just trying to get the right view. Um, yeah, I've got you here. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back and forth. Like if you're okay, cool, you're cool. Talking, I just, uh, yeah, so we can give you prime time there. Yeah. So can, you know, I can come back like that, and then yeah. Started life as a musician. Started working, recording my own music as a teen, actually. Um, That's right. And that got me into studio recording, and I was working at studios, and I was recording bands in the rehearsal complex where where mine was because I had a 38, a Tascam 38, a machine made by TIAC that was, you know, an eight track half inch machine. Oh yeah. Uh, that is, you know, the basic beginning level recording machine of that time uh, of good, of reasonable quality, not the greatest, but you know, it was a great experience to record your own music and, and others. And then, um, you know, it's, it, someone reminded me of something that, that when I was in high school, they bought tapes from me. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that. But I had bought in like one of those duplicating 
cassette machines and you could like make a cassette oh, yeah. from a cassette or you could make two yeah. cassettes at the same time mm -hmm. and i would you know burn records to cassettes for people and um, it's just funny that you know this this like whole resurgence of cassettes recently um one of my clients is a, a com film composer named tony anderson who records incredible music actually it's really great audiophile music you guys should check it out tony anderson uh -huh. um you know creates music libraries and also does music for films and um he sells his music to creators through this publishing platform that allows oh, people cool. to go in but then he also makes records and he sent me like his vinyl recently that's is killer actually and um he's he made a whole record for cassette actually the whole thing is designed to play back from a cassette and uh it's interesting it sounds really cool um, that's cool you know, so yeah, this, this, I, haven't, I haven't seen a cassette machine in a while, man. But anyway, you know, the background is, is, is creating studios and, and, and setting up rooms and tuning studios using DSP to control the system so that every room could have a consistent uh, performance so that the, you know, the mix engineers and the artists could have an experience if you're in New York or LA or wherever you are. If you're on our Osberger monitors, you're going to get that experience. Um, and, you know, when I started making Osbergers in 20, 1997, 98 area, I'd heard that the best driver in the world was made by a company called TAD, um, TAD Labs. And, um, you know, it was like a legendary thing, the TAD 4001, which was even used in the wall of sound for the Grateful Dead's gigantic sound system. And all the, you know, the speakers, if you look carefully in that, are TAD 1601s. Um, their 15 inch woofer, which is, a, oh, you're you kidding. Know. I didn't know that, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Really? In the wall of sound, those ones yeah. with the metal with the metal cones. Well, like the, nope. The, 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 those are different drivers. But if you look oh. at the woofers, yep. the woofers are 1601 Tad. Oh, killer. <laughs> uh, original, you know, which is strange that they still make that driver today and we still use them in oh, making yeah. studio monitors. Um, and we have clients, you know, as the distributor of Tad, we sell both the pro drivers and the hi-fi and we sell the pro drivers to studios mm -hmm. and also to the very top sound companies in the world so like you know today when you go out to see a concert most of the artists are listening with in-ear monitors but when you get to some of the really great vocalists that particularly you know singers that want to really hear themselves a lot of them still want a, a set of stage monitors and so we have some of the top companies like firehouse productions or you know other that cater to those diva type singers, female vocalists, particularly um, that are awesome. And, and, and they have such an amazing sound that, you know, for that stage experience, it's, it's, it's great. And look, they've made that, those pair of drivers since the, you know, mid seventies and that brought them into hi-fi um, where we are today. So we, you know, we carry, we cover both ends of the spectrum and our love affair with Tad started, you know, 25, 26 years ago on the pro side of the business. And when I, I kept kind of poking at Tad in, in the USA um, when they were with, you know, part of it, it, the distribution was through Pioneer USA, which was really a distributor for Pioneer Electronics, not exactly the same as what, you know, Tad is a part of Pioneer Electronics. So their goal was to sell consumer products to, you know, car, uh, marine, home, DJ, whatever it was. And so, you know, Tad was this little teeny thing and they didn't really focus on it. So I said, like, hey, you should make me the distributor. I was buying the lion's share of yeah, drivers which, in the pro market. Which brings me to the question, why? what what made you choose Tad? Because so people know Dave um, chose Tad as his choice of drivers to make his professional uh, uh, speakers and monitors. And what, what, what made you choose Tad as a driver uh, versus... Any of the other guys that are out there? You know, the reason people like the TAT driver, and I think it brings, it speaks all the way into the hi-fi part, but is they're very natural sounding, they're incredibly detailed. At the same time, they sound musical. And when comparing, and you know, they, they came out of a school of a time that was a, you know, advancement after JBL. Some of the people came from JBL uh, um, back in the very beginning of it. Um, but I think, you know, the goal was to make the very best sounding components. And interestingly today, they still make in the pro market, the best sounding components. Um, so 
without, I mean, that original design hasn't really changed. They've have a few incarnations of it, but essentially it's the same concept. And, and they use a vapor transfer in the way that they put the beryllium on the high frequency driver, which gives it a different sound than when you take a piece of beryllium metal and form it into a dome. Um, you know, and, and so one of the things that like, and why I think that they're loved in studios and why they're loved on stage. And I think why they're loved in hi-fi is that they make the sound of a vocal feel natural. And, yeah. you know, in a studio setting, what we're trying to get is actually what does this artist sound like? And let's find a way to make that sound as good as it can be. That's through the microphone and the other processing, but we're judging that all through that speaker. And, um, I've always found that that the TAD components at the studio level have had this incredible uh, quality. Now, you know, when when I was pushing to be the distributor for the hi-fi, I mean, for the for the driver component uh, business, they turned around and said, OK, Dave, you're part of our story. Why our, our products have been in studios for the last 25 years. You've been putting them into studios for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of studios and records made across these uh, cool, cool systems. And, you know, we would love to have you be our distributor for Hi-Fi. And I, it, it took me a second to really think about it because I've been in the pro business for 35 years. And what I love about the Hi-Fi side of it is that the, the listeners are equally passionate and about listening to the music that people make. And I've focused so much on creating the environments and the systems and great sounding rooms that make records, but now I get to focus on what's the experience of listening to that. And in our headquarters, we have both a studio type playback environment and listening studio, and we have the ability to have a complete hi-fi listening environment. And it's very interesting to have those two experiences. And, you know, we're cultivating our listening spaces so that people can come and have that experience for themselves. And, you know, not everybody, not every dealer can taken a reference one or um or have all the other pieces of the puzzle a great sounding room um all the right components to make a reference one and obviously we we're always looking for those right people to, to, to work with but you know at the end of the day we want to make an environment where we know we can deliver a listener the best experience so that if you send us a customer to listen that that it can be a high level experience um I think if you're going to buy any product, hearing it is something important to every listener out there, right? We all want to know, if I invest in this, why is it different or better? Or how am I going to like it? You know, you can read reviews and five reviews will tell you that things are great. And then you listen to it, and you're like, okay, that's pretty good. And I think one of the biggest challenges as a listener, and, and so part of my experience in listening right now and, and this this like reopening a door of putting on a CD or listening to a whole record. I'm trying to have more of a organic experience than just the streamed experience. Like one of my challenges right now in thinking about how we present music to people when we're, we're doing a show like Expona or any of the shows or even at our listening environments, like what do we play? You know, what, what gives people the most in-depth experience. And one of the things that I found from listening to these same speakers for the last two and a half years now as the distributor, and I, I, I try to spend time with them every week, is that they keep talking to me and they keep telling me different things about the same track that I'm listening to. Like, oh, I, I thought I heard something in the background of this violin part or this drum part. And and now I'm hearing it in another way. And I've listened to those recordings a lot of times, even on the greatest studio monitors that we make. And I'm hearing things in another way. And I think it's 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 meaningful on the listener side. Right? I think I think we're all looking for something, which is our connection to the music that we're listening to. And and if you're listening to vinyl, or if you're listening to an SACD, or you're listening to a DAC streamer, um, or just simply plug in your title into your into your DAC to, to get your, your your music in whatever way you can. Um, each of those have a certain kind of way that we experience the music. Like if we're listening to Kobuz, which I love, it's an amazing tool, um, an amazing playback engine. Um, but I listen to music differently than if I put on a record. 
you know, and I think, I think I, I, I'm coming to understand why there's this passion for vinyl and passion even for even listening to a CD. Like we had a listening event with the Boston Audio Society uh, about a month ago in our, in, in our place. We opened up a big open house to both studio owners and audiophiles. And we had about half and half, honestly, we, we had a huge group of listeners that I wasn't expecting in the, from the Boston Audio Society that were awesome. And they brought CDs and they brought all kinds of music to listen to. And it was like, it was kind of exciting. I was like, okay, there's, and even audio engineers and non audiophiles were like, in that room, like that room was full the entire night, the tab room with a pair of C ones. Like yeah. I've had a lot of magical experiences with that pair of speakers. I know you have For a pair sure. in your, your room. I love and, them. It's a and, reference. Yeah, I, I, I compare, well, I use them to compare other things, you know? For well, sure. you know, Jim Anderson, who's a good friend and, and, and been a client for 20 some odd years. Uh, you know, we worked on the original Clive Davis School of the Arts where he's the, he was originally the director. He's gone back to just teaching some classes and making records, but, you know, he listened to C1s and he's, you know, he's been out with the, uh, us at a show playing back stuff from Patricia Barber. And like, you know, when the first time I played him the Tad CR1s at the uh, Cap Audio Fest, um, he, 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 you know, we ran into each other there and he's like, oh, what are you doing? I was showing him. And so we put on this record that he had just done the, the last Patty Barber record and we're sitting there and he goes, he's like, Dave, the last time I heard the snare sound like this was when I was at Skywalker Sound. Yeah. When I mixed the record. Yeah. He's like, I have not heard another system that played that back with that exact experience and tone and feeling as yeah. I had when I mixed the record. And we're in a ballroom a huge ballroom at Capfest. I mean, we did have a great experience there, you know, with, with, uh, we were using a T plus a, um, thousand watt mono blocks on each CR one. And, you know, the CR one's an eight inch woofer. It's a three way with their, you know, their bi biggest, uh, CST dual concentric point source driver. Yep. Um, that's both in the compact reference and the reference one. And, you know, the compact reference, vies for my favorite speaker they make and maybe my favorite speaker i've ever heard in some ways it's oh, just wow. this incredible i mean i love look everything that they make has a certain sound that is very revealing and very open and clear but it's supernatural it's not ever hyped in the top and it's never overstated in the bottom it's like no no it has being, magical it has a real magical mid-range and 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 the top is just that that's the secret. The secret weapon is absolutely that coax. Um, I've never heard anything. And people ask me and I tell them that, look, I've never heard anything uh, do that kind of a mid and high. There's just it's it's different. It's a separate, almost a separate class of, in its own, you well, know, because it does something so unique. Off the top of my head, I believe the crossover to the to the low frequency driver in the CE1. Uh -huh. And I, I believe even in, in the CR1 is around 250. Um and that that low mid, you know, the low mid yeah. of the of the of the mid range driver, yeah, is so detailed. And you know, one of the things about a dual concentric driver on the technology side of it, and just thinking like, why does this work this way? And I've been I've been studying it quite a bit because when I'm in the sound field, which is extremely wide, and it's it's like the sound stage becomes as big as your room. If your room is 20 feet wide, it's a 20 foot wide sound stage. It's like it, but because the, the high frequency component is coming from inside the mid range woofer, the mid range woofer acts as a waveguide in a lot of ways and is, is controlling the dispersion of a tweeter. And, you know, a tweeter by its nature is generally, you know, flush mounted at the face of the speaker and therefore going to fire 180 degrees equally in every direction both at the ceiling and the floor and the listener. Mm -hmm. Whereas a dual concentric driver in almost every single one in every case is shaping that energy and is using part of that basket as a horn actually. So it's a it's like yeah. a horn loaded tweeter with mid-range control. And in this case, that you know that low mid driver and that mid-range driver goes all the way from 250, you know, to a pretty high number, twenty, yeah. if I, you know, yeah, where, yeah. Well. and so all of the vocal range is in one place. And so like when you hear a vocal, like I was listening to this, um, 
um, Sam Smith, um, almost a cappella track. I'm, I, I wish I could, I just had it on tip of my tongue, but his vocal goes from like the most baritone place to the highest falsetto. Oh, and sure. like, I almost felt like I heard his vocal cords resonating. In oh my yeah. Mind, you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah. It's 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 freaking eerie, actually. Like it's like you know, it's like <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, you know yeah I, mean? I call like, that spooky. Could, you get the goosebumps, you know? Yeah, because you're like his yeah. his vocal cords resonate. It's like yeah. And then I was listening in my car, and it's like I just didn't have the same experience, you know. I I, right. I heard it. I heard it. It was a great track. Sure. It's an amazing performance. Um, and anyway, you know, the the Tad experience for me has been eye opening because of my studio experience and because of my recording experience and, and just yep. cre and as an acoustician creating spaces to listen to music, um, you know, my ear is pretty developed in, in many ways and, and I'm very tuned into the way frequencies are occurring and I hear, I hear what the room is doing and, and, you know, from looking at acoustic design and, and, and how the impact of wavelengths and time, and phase all line up, um, you know, sometimes I get lost, just like us audiophiles, we get lost in the technology of our systems, not just the music of our systems. But, sure. you know, with Tad, I found myself getting lost back in the music again, and not just what component am I listening to? And how is this wire affecting it? And what's this wall doing? And oh, like, oh, I can't you know, it's that. just I nice to get to that moment, you know? Squirrel um, food, yeah, yeah. And, so I'll, I'll admit, you know, I, I was at the Montreal Audio Fest uh, recently. We, we we showed up there uh, a couple weeks ago on a on a short. Uh, I was like offered a big ballroom up there, uh, like literally ten days before the show. I was like, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Let's go to Canada. We had so many Canadians reaching out to us, so we was like, let's go and put on a little event. And I was blown away by the audio community up there. By the way, it was incredible how warm and friendly and how many people there was thousands of people lined up to get in on day one so let's yeah we're, wow. we're hoping for that for uh Expona as well i think it's going to be great great well Expona, it but. should it should be g packed man i mean i saw the the uh sold out. The, the, sold out. The listing yeah yeah i mean ton it's going to be a zoo you should get a great uh i have no idea people. but yeah. you know we're, we're excited um but the thing that so I took a little time and I wanted to walk the whole show and I wanted to just see what the vendors were like and I wanted to get the vibe of the place. And yep. and I walked into the marketplace room and I saw these guys selling CDs and I was just like, I got to buy something, you know? And I, and I ended up yeah, just cool. walking out of there with like, you know, 20 CDs of stuff I've already owned in my life probably. or Just to support and, them. Uh, I didn't even look in the record files. I was like, don't even go there. I have to <laughs> shift this stuff back in my, you know, stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we put up a couple of essay CDs and we put up some CDs and like we were comparing how the CD player, the essay CD player that Tad makes sounded compared to going through the exact same DAC. Where, so the, the, the conversion point is the same. Right, yep, the amplifiers sure. yep. and everything, but like and the source is different. Listening to the 1644 Zeppelin track, and then listening to the remastered track of the same Zep three record, there was something about it. Like the CD just kind of punches through in a way I can't decide if it's time. I, I was really I, I spent a lot of time going back and forth, even after hours. I was listening to a few different things, and I just, you know. I find that the electronics react differently when they're reading some code. And then, you know, I, I recently set up, I, I've had this uh, Technics, you know, kind of one of the classic Technics table. It is, I think it's SP12. It's, you know, big, heavy plinth. And this one has a, an aluminum plinth and a wood base, and it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, so we set that up and I got an SPL uh, phono pre that, they just sent to me and they're, they're good friends. And so I was listening and, and, you know, records have a grip, man. I know they're not as like the bandwidth of the best stream at, you know, big wide bandwidth. It has its own sound. And I love that. Sound. It does. It's got a texture to it. Right. But the vinyl has a different emotion to it and it's, yeah. it's more visceral and it's less perfect in some way. And, 
you know, I, obviously we're in a weird time in music where perfection is expected. No yeah. one's expected to have a, a note out of key or to have a moment where they hit the drum head by accident. Like, I mean, imagine Zep 2 or Zep 3 in today's, you know, fix every little detail. Right, no. <laughs> put every sample right and every time, like we'd miss all of the cool print through on the guitar and like, yes, yes. Know, it's like, that's, oh, that would be out, you know? Yeah, that's so, true. So the, so the vinyl reminds me of that, you know? It's uh, true. I was I was listening at, at Isaac's place the other day, a local uh, friend and client, and I was listening to the Clash London Calling and listen to that on vinyl. And I was like, dude, okay, no matter what, I don't think it's going to sound the same if I stream this. I'm telling you, the Sex Pistols so record, the, for the that Sex older Pistols stuff. record, the same exact experience. Like yeah. putting the needle down, hearing the anger jump out of the record, it, yeah. it, it, it plays much better and it sounds better digitally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Okay. No. So, but, you know, I come from a time where records, what, what, what you know, we, we put the record on, we opened up the vinyl, we listened to look at the liner notes. And, you know, there was time in my life where my paycheck came on Friday and I worked down the street from Tower Records in Boston uh -huh. and I would go and go get, go get some records and, or, you know, and then it was CDs and, you know, there was the cutout bins. I don't know if you remember this. But I remember cutout, those. Yeah. yeah. The cutout bins were like two bucks. Yeah. You go in there and they'd have the, the little corner cut out of it. And so I would take my money and be like, I was waiting to get this particular record, this new Pink Floyd record or whatever record I was after. But I would go and take another 10 or 20 bucks and just go in the cutouts record and look for, you know, look for bands that look cool, look for records that maybe I heard in one song or look on the back and see what studio they were recorded at. And like, you know, just being a record geek. And, um, you know, I missed that. And, and I think yeah. this this has opened my eyes back up to why just listening to music is so enjoyable and, and so fun. And, and so I'm so thankful for this, this speaking, chapter speaking of studio, dude, do you know anyone with a, with a two inch 24 track that can help me remaster these things? Let's well, dump them down to two, to we, we have three track. of them kicking around in the shop. Do you? Uh, you have some studers? We have, yeah, we have a studer 27. We have oh. an Atari MTR 90. And I think we still have a JH24 MCI American machine that's killer. <laughs> they're up and running? Um, or they're I'll like, tell you the oh. weird thing is that, you, you know, pe people out there, if you have tape machines, like I have one of the very best tape machine techs in the world. His name is Ken Simon. And mm -hmm. we have people sending us machines from both studio and hi-fi world. We're setting up like Technics 1500s. And, um, it, you know, there's this resurgence, obviously, of tape enjoyment and you know, companies like Metaxas are making these cool new machines that are Those pretty wild, yeah, super high end and great sounding, and and really like a passion project and like a labor of love. And obviously, it's a small production. Every little, I mean, the amount of isn't John is, French up there by you? John French is in New Jersey, yeah, in the, Jersey. The, okay, tape machine guru, yeah. tape machine head guru, yeah, and parts. Um, but you know, we've been fixing tape machines for as long as I've been in business because you know tape was the, the business thing. Yeah. we don't sell a lot of 24 track machines these days to be really honest like that that part of recording is really down to very specialized process or people who want to capture a moment and then transfer it into digital for that tape sound um and you know listen when we put up a reel of tape there's no doubt that it glues things together a certain way and and digital recording doesn't have that same you know, component to it. It's, it's much more open and wide and, and, and bigger and all this other stuff. And you've got to put that sound into it, the sound you want. Yeah. And that's what engineers and producers are focused on is getting the sound they want into the recording medium to sound however they want it to be with tape. Things had a certain sound drums reacted a certain way. It wasn't, a, you couldn't avoid it really, you know, right. the, yeah, the like ramping, the compression, the, the, yeah. the transient response, like how quickly that snare drum hit is a, is a function of how, you know, how, how, how the flux of the tape and the, how hard you hit it. And, yep. you know, there's a, a whole science to the way to get things to play back properly. Uh, you know, calibration, all these things were such a key part of being an audio engineer. Today, that whole art is no gone. tools and you're, you're good to go, huh? Everything's digital yeah. and you know, there's no calibrating anything and you live yep. with everything the way it is. I mean, there are calibrations, but it's, it's pretty basic. 
Um, that said, I think, you know, what we're excited about in, in, in the world of TAD is, you know, we've, we've got a, a brand new floor standing speaker that just uh, today I got news is on the cover of Stereophile and that'll be at the show. Oh, it's killer. The, the, the grand evolution, the big brother of the compact evolution, the CE1TX that yeah. you have. Um, and everybody's been, you know, that, that's been our real winner speaker for, it covers so many people's love for what music's about and what this, what the speaker can do in any size room is incredible. Um, but the G one, is it just a bigger and badder ass? It's just, it's got more, you know, more bottom end and, and you know, just, yeah, you got two, two, yeah. two big drivers, two seven, you know, nice yeah. seven inch. Uh, low frequency drivers coupling together in a in a killer way, and it's it still has this incredible sublime top end and mid range like you were describing. It's just a little bigger, so if you have a bigger room, it's just it comes alive and it, it's a little hungrier of a speaker. I'm not going to lie; it definitely likes power. It wants it wants to be given probably as much as you can power with. It'll 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 take it even, whatever the rating is. You know, you're not going to turn your system all the way up to 11 um, probably. So. Yeah, the way the way I kind of describe to to folks when they ask about the tads is that as you go up, uh, I mean, even the ME ones like the the babies um, are, are have all the same quality attributes as the big ones. You're just scaling it up each time for a bigger room and a bigger scale presentation. But yeah. they're just, you know, I so I find out how close are you sitting, and then you know it, you get an idea for what. So so I don't oversell, you know. So the evolution line. You know, so TAD is made up of two two basic lines in the hi-fi system, the evolution systems and the reference systems. And, mm -hmm. you know, reference is designed to be a no compromise, top of the line, high end audiophile listening speaker. Mm -hmm. It's full range. Yep. It goes down under 29 hertz and out to 100K or something, um, if you can hear there. Um, but it's it's all about headroom and 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 never feeling stressed and those drivers can really handle a lot without ever any change in the way they reproduce sound um and they have a whole line of electronics that go you know components that they make that they feel is the, the tad sound you know though we've listened like i said to amps like t plus a or you know hearing your viola labs on the on the ce ones that you're you listening room um mm -hmm. i've put them up with um you know, a variety of amps, Conrad Johnson, um, you know, we're planning a, another room for the next show with a, another amp company and component different, you know, more of a cultivated experience rather than an all TAD system. But here at, at Expona, we have two, <clears throat> two different TAD rooms, both showing um, variations of the evolution line. We have um, the CE1 and the ME1 in one room, and then we'll have the Grand Evolution GE1 along with the Compact Reference uh, 1TX. So the CR1TX and the GE are going to be with the Reference Electronics and the uh, the ME1 and the C1 will be with the Evolution. And what room? What room is it? So room? We have 12, 1239 and 1240. 1239 and 1240. So you guys remember that room 1239, yeah. write that down, 1239 and 1240. And we, also have one other, we have another room. Uh, that we're sharing with Wells Audio. Yep. Um, Jeff Wells is a great guy who makes, you know, really great products that are, he has three tiers of, of product, you know, sort of tier one, tier two, two, three, all based on a lot of the same chassis and components. So a buyer can get a really great value. He's showing um, in his room with, uh, I think it's about a six or $7,000 integrated uh, preamp amplifier and his $1,800 DAC and the uh, TAD E2. Um, so the Evolution 2 is a two and a half way speaker. So it uses a different scheme than the other uh, part of the Evolution line or reference line. So it's using the tweeter portion of, uh, of the TAD, similar to the ME1 tweeter or, C, um, or the uh, E1 tweeter um, combined with a woofer with a two, uh, it's a dual woofer system, but the lower woofer is playing a, a lower frequency um, than the mid low bass, I guess you'd say. And then there's a port that's attached to that low driver. So it's a 2.5 system. And, you know, the whole system with cables is under 30 grand. So it kind of hitting a, you know, an, an entry into the higher end market, but in an affordable yep. way. Um, 
and, a, and the TAD sound. And even though it's not a CST driver, it's got the beautiful top end of a TAD system. Um, and that, that's a $20,000 floor stander. Um, the, the entry point for TAD with the ME1 is uh, 17,000 with the, with the stands. And um, so it's, you know, it's, those are our two kind of like get involved. What I love about the ME1, you know, so the way the Evolution <clears throat> series is conceived of is kind of like there's a couple different families within it. So you have the, uh, the Evolution 1 TX, which is a floor standing speaker. That's a, a black speaker. I'm sure you've seen it at the show or heard it. It's, it's been around for quite some time. It's a three-way with a CST driver. It uses the same CST driver in both the E1 and the Micro Evolution. So you have the E1 and the ME1. Those are a family. And they use the same CST driver, the same woofer. The floor stander has two of the, of the, of the woofers. And those woofers are um, uh, five-inch. Um, and, um, you know, they... They go down to about uh, just under 40 hertz in the ME1, and the uh, E1 goes to 34 hertz. So it's, you know, it's a great system. The E1 floor standard is a $30,000 speaker. Um, so that's the E1 and ME1 family. And then you get up to the CE1 and the, and the GE1. Those are really the same family of speakers. So you've got the seven inch woofer or dual seven inch woofer in the Grand Evolution. And you have the, the larger four inch CST driver. Um, and it's, uh, you know, as you go from the three inch to the four inch and then in the uh, reference series, that's a five inch CST driver. That, that mm -hmm. low mid just keeps opening up and getting bigger. So, you know, you get up to the CR1 and it's like, oh wow, this is a grand image. And all of them have that unique quality of um, a very wide and, and, and three-dimensional soundstage. But obviously, as you get from the smaller to the larger CST driver, you're getting a, a bigger and bigger voice, um, which is enjoyable. That's cool. Any new technologies? Uh, Steve DeHarty's asking. Five-year plan. What are, we, what are we interviewing for a job, Steve? <laughs> well... I'm not at liberty to discuss the entirety of our plan, but okay. suffice to say, the typical um, timing for TAD's components is between seven and 10 years. Um, the speakers have been refreshed in about the six to eight year time zone. So you can imagine that, and you know, we have products like the CR1 TX. So anything with a TX, at the end of it, so, you know, CR1 TX, CE1 TX, uh, R1 TX, uh, E1 TX are all of the latest generation and take advantage of all the technology improvements that they've had through drivers, cabinet design, porting. There's some very interesting cabinet design for the internal structure in the G1. They have some tubes in the back that um, prevent standing waves or reduce them dramatically. Um, and just some very, you know, they, they're always trying to find better ways to do things. So a lot of what um, the mission is, is to, you know, keep looking at ways to take a product that's loved in the market and, um, and make it better. And something like the CE1TX is a great example. The CE1 was designed, I think, and released in about 2011. And... Somewhere around when we just took on the line in, in uh, two and a half years ago at the end of uh, 2022, um, or 2021, I should say, um, the uh, CE1 was going away and recently had a chance to buy some of the last of that model, at a, which are selling at a reduced price, but very similar in, in many ways to the CE1 TX. But... So, you know, the, the manufacturer that made some of the components inside the driver or the crossover board, like just pieces they couldn't get any longer because of manufacturing changes. So they discontinued the CE1. And after discontinuing it, they had so much feedback from dealers that they needed that product back, that they worked on it for a couple of years and came out with the CE1 TX just, if you remember, about a year ago. 
um, at, uh, yeah, I would say about a year, year ago, year and a half ago, we came out with the C1TX. So, um, yeah, at the Florida Audio Expo last year. And yep, I remember. Yeah. And, and which is, it's also a really great show. I, I, I really handed to, uh, the, the guys that put that together, Bart, um, yep. and Veer and, and the, and the team that he's got, um, make that a really fun exhibit. Uh, but, the, you know, the when we came out with that, there was such anticipation of it because it had been one of the most popular selling TAD speakers in, the, in, in all their history. Um, and I think because it hits a certain price point, it fits a lot of rooms. It's, you know, it's a floor, it's a, not a floor stander. It's a stand mount. You you know, people started calling it a bookshelf and I looked at it and it's like, this is a 70 pound speaker. <laughs> Definitely you not a have bookshelf. A, yeah. have a bookshelf. Yeah, there's know? no shelf that's holding that thing. Yeah. But, you know, we also, after really understanding everything about the product line, you know, the, the, the stands are an option, but unless you have something really great planned, <clears throat> the stands screw into the speaker and they're kind of become one thing. And yeah. so we, 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 right now we sell that we haven't ever sold a pair of the floor stand speakers without the stand. So as we go forward, we're incorporating that into the price. And, and if somebody yeah. wants to take it off, we'll have a, you know, a credit you can take off if you don't want them. But again, we've never shipped one without it. So um, let me ask, let, let me ask you something about that, about the changes that you just, you mentioned that they, the, the, the uh, speakers had gone through some changes. Um, someone mentioned to me the other day, they said, you know, you know, tads don't look like they've changed much and the prices have changed. So can you go a little bit more into sort of validating the changes for us? Sure. You know, I mean, like a speaker like the the CE1 or the you know for going from CE1 to CE1TX, you know, first they're like, hey, we'd like to, you know, we have to change this woofer. So let's go about fixing that and make you know trying to think of what we could do to make it better. And then you made that a little better, but in order to get that change, you had to look at the port depth, and you had to then you start looking at that. And you're like, well, if I only had another quarter liter inside the box. And then now the way that the crossover that you had designed works is different. So suddenly, and then looking at capacitors and finding ones that you like maybe a little better. Um, in, the, in the case of the C1TX, they, <clears throat> you know, really changed the CST driver. Um, so it's, it's a completely new driver. The woofer is completely new. The crossover is completely new. So the cabinet size is completely new. So it's like, yeah, if you look at them side by side, you'll realize, oh, actually, the CE1TX is a little bigger. And, you know, th I think the look was the TAD look. And, they, you know, the Japanese design is very stoic and they're very slow to change something that people love. And it's, it's part of the look and feeling of the product. So, um, you know, I would look at things like maybe some new options coming or maybe some you know, uh, revised elements, both in appearance and, and, and um, you know, we see refinement as, as more of, of, of the direction that Tad is going in general is refinement, not replacement. Sure. Or yeah, let's, yeah, come, yeah, let's find sense. a spot in the market where we have like the, the E2 is a new technology. It's, it's not a CST driver. It's a 2.5 system in a kind of vintage looking wood cabinet that's absolutely beautiful, but simplified and fits a lot of taste different different taste um you know when you look at your ce ones do you want them to change no right no way They're like, gorgeous. it's not broken let's not yeah. fix the look of that yeah. that that woodwork is second to none they yeah, did come yeah. out with a black version so we now have an a ce1 tx um yeah K, I think... which is which is which is black and and beautiful and it was gorgeous yeah I think yeah, what, no, people, really. what people might mistake is they say, well, it doesn't look any different. How come it's a different price? And you're like, well, there's a lot of changes that happen inside, you know, you, you, you know, and they're maintaining a, a, a look in a, in a tradition. Um, I guess well, we also you could have ask, to you could ask the same thing about Macintosh, right? <laughs> you know, hey man, imagine crazy. Macintosh came out with a brushed aluminum front and looked like esoteric. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. would anybody <laughs> pay attention to it and be like, yeah, not at all. I mean, we like to identify things by familiarity and comfort, yeah, right? Um, sure. I think that, you know, you can expect to see some new looks coming down the pike. I do uh -huh. think that's, you know, in the in the thinking. And look, since we joined forces with, with TAD, 
<coughs> we also have had some influence on, you know, the grand evolution came out of a meeting about what should we do next and the success of the CE1, I thought, you know, people were asking for the next step up from that. And I, I suggested that we really look at it and even came up with the name grand evolution. And it was really loved right out of the gate. And I, I think we've had a lot of market feedback that we're, you know, able to channel back to Tad in a different way than they've had in a long time. And, you know, going back to where, um, you know, Tad got into the hi-fi market with, you know, charismatic and, and brilliant guy like Andrew. And then, you know, working with those incredible engineers at Tad, they were able to come up with incredible driver technology that really dug back into that 25 year, uh, you know, 75, I should say 45 years of experience back to 75, developing that beryllium diaphragm that really shaped a lot of the technology of today's uh, CST driver in terms of the way that they treat the diaphragms is very unique um, and, and dangerous. They, it has to be done in a, a vacuum uh, chamber at 6,000 degrees. Um, oh, wow. But the benefit of that process and the technology of that process, and like I said, like they haven't changed the 4001 since 1975 or six or something like that. You know why? They can't beat it. It's so yeah. good. It's yeah, so, yeah, so good, cool. right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, and I think that's in the same idea of the CST drivers, but at every stage they've upgraded it. So for like the C1 TX or the R1 TX or the CR1 TX, they're really departures from the original designs and drivers and they, they incorporate new technology. So in something like the, um, the new e ET703 um, A, the super high frequency compression driver that a lot of people in the hi-fi world have added onto their horn loaded systems to get that 5K to 45K band, or they were used in, you know, a lot of nightclubs for that high-end sizzle. They were used in, you know, all kinds of uh, audiophile speakers. So, um, you know, we got them to reissue that, which was a whole um, feat of engineering. And now it, instead of just being a beryllium diaphragm, there's a magnesium uh, component to it as well. And um, they changed the phase plug and they did a lot of things. To but they don't the use it in one of their products, right? It's just a driver that's sold for other people. Yeah, currently there's no um, TAD professional products out there, although, you know, that might be something to watch for or in partnership with uh, other oh, brands yeah. like Osberger. Yeah. Um, you know, we have some Osberger, we have an anniversary series out now that uses all TAD components and uses the ET703. You know, I, I want a set of those, bro. I want some seven foot tall babies with the the, the things like we listen to in the, in the studio, man. Those things were balls to the wall, bro. Well, Jeez. you know, don't don't be surprised if one of the exponents you show up and I got a big system hanging around with all TAD components in it. Yeah, there you and, go. And, you know, um, show what that can be like because it's yeah. it's a different experience. The horn-loaded systems are incredible. And using their 4001 and hearing the way the wood opens that up and, and just it's it's its its its, its own thing. Um, but, you know, I think as far as, you know, technology goes and, I, you know, we, we have – we have some new products launching over the course of the year. We have a very rigorous release schedule over the next two years of products coming. Um, so they're very dialed into what people need right now and what, what they want in terms of the high end of um, the audio file market. We're not going to come out with a $3,000, you know, every kid's, uh, you know, beginner stereo. That's just never where Tad's going. Right. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> but, you know, we've encouraged them to look at things that I think would pair up well with what we already have, you know, or add to what we have. Um, you know, we, we are at the end of life of the, in the reference series, the C600, we have what, which, which we have in our listening room. And I spent a lot of time a being the preamp without the preamp. So no preamp, preamp, different preamp. And they also came out at the end of last year with the C1000, um, in the evolution line. And, that's a pretty magical box. I'm not going to lie. It, it, like I've, I've put it in a lot of different circumstances to hear what it actually sounds like and what it's doing. And even the C1000, it takes the C1000 takes a lot of, of its technology in terms of the power supply and the way they've separated the audio path and the, the components and the listen to 
ca capacitors and all these different things and the way the logarithmic control of the actual rotary uh, control of the, you know, the preamp itself. But, you know, just taking the DAC and going in to my amp and then putting it through the preamp, just one more stage and the whole thing changed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's like it puts magic fairy dust on it, man. It's incredible. But, yeah, I know what you mean. I've got some preamps like that too, sitting in the other room. I hang on to them. I won't sell them. You know, I'm like these are just amazing circuits. You know, and and so we have a C700 that was announced and will mm -hmm. be um, coming out very, very shortly. So that's a new product that I we don't have it here, but yeah. the announcement. I I'm, I shouldn't. I, I came out ten days early. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Japan. <laughs> um, Sinji san um, yeah. also at, at the show here we have we have our, our esteemed leader from tad Sinji Toritani, um the, the CEO and president and also one of the designers of of, of, of some of the what's his, what's his what's his favorite thing to eat when he comes to America well the first thing he does is take a picture of everything that comes to the table and says oh American portion <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what it the is it's portion, always like yeah. probably four times what you'd get at a Japanese restaurant. For sure. Um, we, you know, we've had some good meals together and he's definitely um, a great guy and has a yeah. really great vision for Tad. He's That's worked cool. there for 40 years. 40 so, years. Know, yeah. That so, guy that I see 20, all the time 30, there. 38 years, 39 years. Wow. Um, That's awesome, man. And just had a birthday and, uh, you know, he's, um, he's, a, you know, he's Japan is very too. traditional. A road warrior too, man. You know, when I asked, when I asked him about, his ascension to CEO and his plan, you know, he, he said, I have to ensure that TAD will go on indefinitely because people love the product and because we make it really well yeah. and that we, we got to get as many people to hear it. And so the, the work we're doing is going to the shows, bringing the product to the people, connecting with the community, you know, building community around Tad again, because it, it kind of was asleep for a while and and it's you know it's been a very interesting and 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 exciting road um but also because you know people want to know that where they can get it or um is it gonna you know stay you know in the market or is there something new coming like you're asking about renewing and renewal and one of the fortunate things that's happened since we started coming to the shows and reaching out to the press and reaching out to the community is that we've had a lot of great reviews of the product. The product has only gotten better in the time that, that it was, you know, not in the market here. It's, it's a remarkable product. And, and is it only made, is everything made in Japan, even the ME cabinets on the ME? Well, you know, this has come up and um, there are some products in the evolution line where the cabinets are made um, in uh, another part of Asia in China or um, and they have a very special factory where that's done under control of TAD and, and not in a mass production, uh, you know, stamped out environment. So it's, it's meeting the high standards of quality control and design. Um, those, you know, the metal stands in the, in the evolution line, but all the components are handmade in China. I mean, in, in Japan. So like all the drivers are handmade in the, in the pioneer, uh, Pioneer has like a million square foot or, you know, multi-million square foot. I think it's one mile of square foot of a factory. Damn. Tad has its own laboratory manufacturing within that complex. And, and that's so where all the drive. Different assembly line, different parts, bins, everything, right? A hundred percent dedicated yeah. to TAD. Um, you know, the components, the, the, the drivers. So all of the drivers and all of the, <clears throat> the essential components, and then it's assembled and tested. Whereas the reference line, all the cabinetry is made by um, a company called Tendo, which is the top level, you know, uh, furniture cabinet makers in all of, of Japan, and they're specialized in finishing. And Tendo developed all of the standards for the finishing of all the products. So yeah, it's amazing. They, they're built to a, a standard that, you know, doesn't really matter where they're manufactured, they're made to the TAD standard. And I think, you know, there's guys out there that have knocked it and said, why is it you know, at this price, it should be handmade or whatever. And and the reality is the handmade products are the reference line. Everything in the yeah. reference line is handmade from top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, and for anybody that has not seen Tad's up close, I'm telling you, this is the highest level fit and finish of any product I have in here. 
um, clearly. I mean, you just get up on it and, and immediately you can tell it is of a bespoke level quality. This is something that you could have forever. You could hand it down generation to generation and it's just of that level. You know, there's, you, and trust me, I know how to find the little imperfections and the little things in there. I don't see any on the tads, you know, they're really quite, quite, uh, you know, they may be a premium price, but you get what you pay for. They are every bit of a premium build and the Sonic is, is, is incredible as well. Yeah. So I, I, I think the one thing that's interesting that also I heard from Sinji himself is that there's a certain level of like, if something comes in with even the slightest blemish, it's rejected. Like there's yeah. not, there's no room for a piece of dust under the finish. Um, and you know, like they have some real um, amazing dedication to quality. Like every binding post, the the back panels, like they're not reaching in and say like, Oh, we used that before. Let's use that again. Now that um, there's a lot of, a lot of really dedicated, and really everything in the in the product is dedicated for Tad. So it's been made specifically for the product. There's no like, let's go to the Pioneer room and go pull something off the shelf. And right. that goes for the components. Like we recently in our tech shop um, got a um, one of the um, um, D600, which is the CD, SACD player um, from 20, the, the, the gentleman bought it in 2010 mm -hmm. or 2011, I think. Um, and it started having an issue with opening and closing smoothly. Sometimes it would open okay, sometimes it wouldn't. And so he sent it to us and it turned out to have, you know, it had some buildup inside the mechanism. Um, but we got to examine it pretty carefully. And to be honest, hadn't really opened up our, our, our more recent models because, well, it's not broken. Let's not open that thing up, you know. Um, sure. But when I opened it up, I was absolutely shocked at the level of detail and quality in the manufacturing of it. So first off, like it had a complete ground plane. The whole bottom of the pan was a solid piece of copper, like major, you know, yep. not, not insignificant. It had a divider between the, the left and right half of the unit. And one part had the power supply. The other part had the audio. None of the wires between touched. They had separate power supplies for two sections, for the motor section and for the audio section and they're divided up so that they're not touching each other um even the mechanism and the, the structure of the mechanism chem's like it's like dave i've never seen something so built to meticulously be, built, meticulous yeah. and bulletproof Japanese and, tradition yeah and the billet aluminum all on the inside of the thing like solid pieces of aluminum front to back um the structure of it the the way the circuit boards the componentry that was chosen like there's not a component on there that you'd say like, oh, they chose this for price. No, They're, everything inside there is remarkable. And so, we, you know, we put it up and we listen to it compared to, you know, the, the best one that we have in the shop. And it, it you know, it sounds incredible. It, it he, you know, he cleaned the mechanism and, and every bit of it. And, you know, it's, it's remarkable that all it took was some cleaning. It didn't need anything replaced. And here's a piece that was made in like 2011 and working perfectly and um so you know after after a little cleaning you know the shaft where the where the where the the tray slide back and forth um had some build up underneath it and that and i think the gentleman might have had an animal living with him because there was some hair in there but that said um we brought it back to new and and it sounding and tracking and you know performing amazingly so you know i think amazing. it's just a testimony to the quality that they build into everything um recently just had a review of the uh of the um sacd and it you know it got a nice review the c1000 um um and i i i wish i could tell you the reviewer but you got to check it out look for the c1000 review it's it it, it and it is that i it, it's the, i spent all this time listening to it and i put it on a couple different systems and just try to get it to hear what it sounded like and it, it just makes everything sound supernatural and amazing width in the game stage of the wideness and the depth and just real nice improvement. So, um, Mikey, are you, you're, did you tell me you're not coming to Expo? I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will not, uh, I'm skipping this show. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, I've been to every single other one. This is just going to be a complete, um, zoo cluster. And, um, I prefer to get a little more intimate time with the, 
folks when I come to see them and so forth. And I'm headed to Munich too. So I'll be doing yeah, that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That, 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 and that looks so incredible. I can't, you know, I, I, uh, I really have you been there? I haven't been. And I, I, I was going to go last year and something came up and I couldn't really do both things. So, um, but I'm thinking about Good going job. this year. I, I, I sort of have it on my, on my should be heading there uh, list. We'll see. But, you know, we, we we've been on the tad tour you know we 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 did cap audio fest um at the end of um last year we started this year with flax the florida audio expo um we went up to uh um, montreal most recently and now uh expona and then we're going to go to the show in uh, costa mesa so if you're out there in you know southern california you get to hear it. we have a nice big room out there so we're going to have the reference ones along with the GE ones and, you know, the whole, we'll bring oh, out the whole family, we'll bring yeah. the whole family along. Um, and that's been really fun too. Cause I think people like in, in Montreal, we had a really big room and we had the ref ones and the CR ones set up and one set up. And then the other setup was the GE ones and the C ones. And we had a lot of people, we were rotating, playing them and people came and listened to each system and, you know, certain people are like, oh my God, I want this one. This is the one. And other people pick the other one as the one. Um, but the C1, you know, it it hits everyone in, in a certain way. The C1. Yeah. It's a magic. It's a magic speaker. There's no question. You know, I mean, Dave, Dave Solomon from Cuba's, uh, Cobas gave me yeah. a great playlist and we've been hammering that list and it's got some really great tracks and I'm cultivating a list of tracks that you, you know, that you'll, when you buy your tads, you'll open up and get this CoBuzz download and be able to listen to these particular 10 tracks with my notes on what I listen for in setting up a room. And like, how do you understand the stereo image? How do you understand the way the bass is supposed to hit? You know, how do you get the vocal to be right? And so these tracks that we're working from and we're working with CoBuzz to develop a, a two-tier cultivated list, the break-in list, like what are the first 10 tracks I need to listen to on my system? And then what's my favorite music of the moment for on my Taz right now. And that, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to continue that flow, but um, you know, we're excited about this new partnership emerging with Cobas and cool, and, man. You know, um, yeah, Dave's and, a good guy, man. He's local Solomon. Yeah. He's we're, in Atlanta. We'll I told together, him I was yeah. going to, when I, when I come out there, I was going to take him over to a studio cause he's, he actually had worked in studios himself actually. So yeah. And uh, he's worked in hi-fi, hi-fi buys, right. He worked in the Atlanta hi-fi market for years. Yeah, uh, had a lot of amazing experiences, and uh, we had dinner recently in Montreal, and uh, I, I really enjoy where he's coming from musically, and and yeah, man, that guy knows like more about songs and who made them and how they got to be, and just the amazing. He gave a great presentation in our room, and you know he's going to be by in the in the exponent at exponent in, in one of the rooms to play music for an hour and just you know the history of the songs that he loves and and. It's 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 worth taking it in, um, but if you're at Expona, you, you you guys out there in the, in, in the in the listener space, come yeah. say hello, come Do take it. a listen. Yeah, we're about out of time here. I All don't right. want to keep you. I know you're a busy, man. Um, I gotta get get, get uh, I gotta get some rest because tomorrow we have to be. Uh, it's weird, but like the last Expona, we had two days. We got in on Wednesday and got to start setting up our room, and then Thursday we worked out the kinks and tuned it. Now it's 8 a.m. only, so we're going to get in our room at 8 a.m. and have oh, it running shit. and get it up and going. And we'll Good for you, man. Treatments from our partners at Jokavi, and uh, we Great do have spot, some. I, I'm a little prepared for some special moments. <laughs> we have a few there different Japanese whiskeys to enjoy with the Japanese. Is that Hibiki? Whiskeys. This one is uh, Aichiro. Aichiro. Oh. And grain. Uh, why world blended whiskey? So, they um, it's like uh, what does it say here? Non chill, non colored. So this is just the, yeah. The and uh, looks like all, some all in Japanese. The, looks the, like one of the cream, one of the guys cream. from Tad when we when we met up in Montreal, he gave oh. this to me as a gift. Oh sweet! And, um, I decided to just bring it bring it here to the show. Um, there you go, brother. It, it's uh, So if anybody wants to come get a taste of Japanese. Oh, whiskey, look at that invitation, you know, man. That's uh, it's a hell of an invitation. Go get just, some of the high-end Japanese whiskey, man. Yeah, just say Mikey sent you. 
There you go. That's uh, that's the, that's all you got to say. I, I will say something, Mike. You know, like I was in Mumbai tuning up a studio. Uh huh. And I posted up a little video of it, and the guy reached out to me. He goes, "Oh, I saw you on OCD Mikey's channel when you were in <laughs> a studio in Atlanta." Yeah, buddy. And he saw that little segment, but he's like, "Oh, I follow you here and there, and you know, you're reaching Mumbai, man. That 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 really killed me. Like it was so cool." And I've had cool. a lot of people at the shows tell me that, you you know, they know you and that you've sent them our way. And we really appreciate that support. And, um, you know, we're really Great glad to have you in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the culture and in the family. And, um, you know, any, any customers of Mikey's, if you're hearing me now or you hear me anytime, just reach out. We'll always make sure, you, you know, that um, we're here for you guys and we, we support um, all, of the, all of the love that, that we've gotten from Tad. We really appreciate it. And, or for Tad and and uh, and from this great hi-fi community, and you know, come by. Tell us, tell us what you want to hear. We love to get some. Yeah, man. Dave will play your, your tracks. You Dave know? will play your music, man. Give him your tool and your punk rock and your whatever, man. He's good. Hip hop, yeah. modern, electric, classical, acoustic. I love it all, actually. I, you know, my dad took me to concerts from the time I was seven, and from opera to the Zeppelin, to the Cure, to Procol Harum, to um, wow. Humble Pie, you know, just on and on and on and on. And um, that said, um, thank you all for listening. Charles, I see, yeah. uh, you know, I saw your note. Thank you very much for tuning yeah. in. And Mikey, thank you so much for having me. And, you bet, Dave. And, um, I'll see you in uh, in Atlanta probably sooner than in later. It, yeah, holler, work. man. Make sure you get in touch and we'll, we'll all go eat, man. I, I was at the Optimist the other day and I was thinking about when we 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 chowed down, man, Dave Dave uh, took me to a nice dinner there at a at a great seafood joint. That was good, man. Yeah, that it, th that might be my favorite Atlanta food. That that place is killer. We gotta yeah. grab grab Dave and we Solomon will. from from Cuba's and uh and uh we'll uh Cobas Cobas man. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to say, man. One of those names. <laughs> hey, you know, my you name's Dave Malik Ford. That is not an easy name. You know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. All right, you be Thanks, good, man. Brother. Take it easy. See you okay, soon. Okay, man. See everybody. Okay. All right, take okay. it easy. Cheers.